everybody, Jake and Gino here, and today we're discussing how to find multifamily deals, part one, G-Daddy. How are we doing today? Mr. Stenziano, I'm doing great. Love the shirt. Always making it happen for you, big man. And Gino, there are two main paths to getting deals in multifamily investing. What's the first one? The first one, listen up, everybody. Do not be Jake and Gino when they first started out. The bull in the china shop, running around and <laughs> thinking that the broker was the most important team member. Your broker, going through that multifamily broker, over 90% of the deals listed and get sold are from multifamily brokers. So that is the first path, Jake. All right, gang, we have a Jedi roadmap to uncovering deals with multifamily mm -hmm. brokers. That's right, Mr. Yoda. That is right. And I'm going to tell you right now, the first one, the first step to this roadmap is systematizing the relationship with a CRM so you're making contact with that broker every 30 days. Okay? I don't care if you use Salesforce. I don't care if you use what the GDAD uses in his company. I don't care what you use, but you need to have a CRM and you need to systematize the relationship so you're making a touch point every 30 days with that broker. There's a handful of guys and gals doing all the deals, okay? You can spread it out a little bit more. I think it's something crazy like, you know, I don't even know. I don't know what the number is, but I know that the bulk of the deals are done by a select few brokers. It's the Pareto's principle. So number one, you're the salesperson, okay? Number one shouldn't even be systematizing. Number one should be understanding who you are. You are the salesperson. The broker is the one bringing you the deals that can set you free for the rest of your life. So step one, systematize that relationship with the CR. What you doing over there, big guy? What the you doing? The broker is the honeybee. Woo, That's what the broker is. And, is. and when you're systematizing it, two platforms that I would use. You either use PipeDrive, which is a very inexpensive CRM, or we use Active Campaign at Jake and Gino. A lot of the Jake and Gino students use that. They may be a little bit more robust than what you're looking for for a CRM, but those two, they get the job done. And you want to have it, like Jake says, people, systems, culture. We always talk about those three. The systems is very important because you want these touch points. You want to be top of mind. And it's not just about reaching out and going, hey, Jake, you got any deals for me? Get to learn the multifamily broker. Get to learn what Jake likes to do. I know like Jake likes to go out. 100%. He likes, he likes to ride in his quad. He likes to go, you know, shooting guns. He loves hanging out with his family. There's so many different activities that Jake and I can really connect with, learn. And it's it becomes a great relationship. You get to learn these brokers and you get to know what they're doing, what their hobbies are, what their sports teams are. What, what You know, think about the Ford. F -O -R -D. You're the salesperson. Yes. Yes. Ford. Family occupation, recreation, and dream. Think of those four when you're networking and you're always talking about whether it's their family, what their job is, what their, what their, you know, what, what their listing, what their likes are, recreation, and what are their dreams? What are their bucket lists? What do they like to do? They like to go, you know, traveling, hiking, fishing, whatever that is. Think about the Ford when you're talking to, to the multifamily brokers. The second step to the roadmap is get off your ass. You need to get on site no excuses anymore, mm. okay? You need to be on site. Gino talked about building rapport. You build rapport the best by being face-to-face -face and getting on site when there's a deal that meets or fits your criteria, okay? Look, we need to know that it's in the right market for us. We need to know it's in the right sub-market. We need to know the income's there. We need to know that it has the tenant base that we're looking for, yada, yada, yada. When, when those things hit, get off your butt, get on site, spend some good time there, don't be a prick. Comment on the things that you like about it. You know, ask some questions and build that rapport on site. You got to get yourselves out there. More importantly, go on and you're looking up a broker. See what deals they have. Call them up on that deal and schedule a property tour for that deal. And they will be excited to take you. They don't want to take you to coffee. They want to take you and show you deals. So that's what you're doing. If you're not in the market, bring them your, coffee. <laughs> have a partner. Bring your, let your partner schedule it. Let a potential person you're working with, if you can't get out there, but you need to get on site because all of a sudden when you're on a property tour, you're learning. And the most important thing is they may be showing you properties that they have listed, but they may say, hey, Jake, you know what? These deals may not fit your criteria. I've got this mark deal that's not on market yet. Let me let you take a look at it. We've gotten a couple of deals that way. So it's important to get out there, get on those property tours, get to know them, and tell them you're not just a tire kicker asking for T12s and OMs, that you're actually out there 
taking that next step. Number three, Gino loves talking about love language. You got the love doctor coming on the uh, multifamily zone. It's a little teaser there, but listen. Yes. You need to know how to break up with a chick, all right? When you're there and it doesn't work, you don't say, man, you're ugly, you had holes. Gino said the, the parking lot looked like Chernobyl. This was the most disgusting property, yada, yada. You don't do that. You don't do that. Know how to break up. Hey, Mr. Broker, great looking deal, great property. Uh, you know, this one is not going to be the one for us, but, and, and then type this in an email because maybe the broker can send that to the seller and say, Hey, look, you know, people are interested. They like the property, but they haven't hit yet. The broker's not an idiot. He probably knows if it's overpriced, but guess what? In this market, it's probably selling anyways. The deal is going to trade. It's mm -hmm. probably just not going to be you. So know how to break up. Hey, thank you so much for spending time with me. Really enjoyed your insight. Great property. This is probably not the one for us. But please, 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 please send me the next deal that you get. I'll be there. You know I'm the guy to get it done when when everything aligns for me. And that's really important, Jake, because what you're doing is you're thinking about the broker and all the work that this broker put into bringing this listing to Bingo. market. And on average, it takes about three weeks to get a whole marketing package together. You got to get drone shots. You got to get pictures. You got to get T12s. You got to get the OM together. Compliment them on the work that they did. Because there's a lot of work that goes into it and say, hey, listen, this doesn't fit our parameters. The cap rate's a little low, but it just doesn't fit ours. Just keep us in mind for the next on one. I that, man. I would just say, look, it's a, it's a great deal. Just lead with that empathy, lead with the, the positivity yes, and let but, it be. But what you want to do is you want to at least let them know that I'm on for the next deal. Whatever you want to send That's me, right. I love to underwrite it. I want to get, you know, I want to get the next crack at the next deal. This deal looks great. It's in a great market. It just doesn't fit my parameters right now, but please send me anything going forward. And then if they ask, you can get a little bit more specific. Yes. But just, just to keep it positive, just want to see the next one. Mm -hmm. Next up, be the person of punctuality. Number even four. if the broker's, yes, right. Even if the broker is not punctual, okay? They're the one bringing the meat. You just need to be seeing all the deals. That's the key. You need to be seeing all the deals that come through because, you know, Gina and I were talking about this with a broker yesterday. You know what stings? is when you don't get in that bat. Mm -hmm. When you don't see the deal and you realize later on that it traded, that stings. So you want to be the person of punctuality. When a broker sends you something, get back to them, regardless if it's not going both ways. You may be on the uptick of your career. You need to be able to get to that next level so that they're giving you that same respect you know, in trade. But be a person of punctuality, regardless you know, what the broker is doing, so that when they send you something, you get it back to them right away because they know that you're there. Okay, So that punctuality is key. That's important. Just real quick on that. When they underwrite a deal, if it's Monday and they send you the deal Monday, don't get back to them on Friday because you lost that deal. Mm -hmm. You better get back to them the latest Tuesday morning and you better get back to them and let them understand because it is all about speed of execution right now in this market. Last one. You got to be a closer. This is big dog territory. Everyone wants these deals. Look, the, the, the government's printing money like crazy. You need something that's going to hedge inflation. You need something that's going to create cash flow for your family for the long term. You got to be a closer and only retrade when justified, okay? Because the retrade is going to get you blackballed. We know that. You got to only retrade when it's completely justified. You have a rational conversation with the broker. Otherwise, stick your number, be a closer, do what you say you're going to do. And if you want to go big badass, Throw some hard money on that little sprinkle on the top, right, Gino? Woo! <laughs> hard money day one. It's only for the people who don't have the faint of heart and yeah. those who are educated and those who know about the deal and those who can do a little due diligence beforehand. But it's really important what Jake is talking about because when you're out there and you're talking to a broker and you're out there trying to cut the broker's commissions, the broker did his job. He brought you and the seller You're not seeing together. another deal from that guy. That's the problem. Don't take food off of his table because what happens if the role was reversed? Put your broker hat on. You did all this work. You executed. You brought the deal. And now all of a sudden, hold on, you're taking some, some meat off my plate? That doesn't sit too well with the broker and it shouldn't sit well with you if you have those values, right? It's all about those values. And I, to me, when I, when, I, when I think about that, it's not fair. If it is a fair retrade, if it's something that you didn't know, if it's the numbers were incorrect that they sent over to you, if it's some CapEx that all, all of a sudden is cast iron piping and there's all, that is a fair retrade. But if it's a few Find thousand dollars- Find out on the front end though. Exactly. Find out on the front end so you and, don't run into this. If it's yeah. a $10 million deal and it's $10,000 worth of windows, come on now, come on, son. 
We almost, <laughs> we did that. We're complaining about five hundred dollar windows. Where five years later, the assets no, tripled I did in that. value. I did that. I'll take, I'll take full responsibility on that one. But still, I mean, I wasn't complaining. I was digging my heels in and getting pissed on principle. Different market. Shed the ego. What Jake is saying right now. Shed the ego and always think about that hundred year mindset, long term vision. Is 10 grand going to affect you today? Listen, we had an $11 million deal. We were squabbling over a $20,000 cable contract. We're going to lose a deal over a $20,000 cable contract. And it contract. was fully owner financed. <laughs> and, and, and the first month, we, we, we netted over 100 grand in the deal, the first month when we walked away. So just use logic, right? Build a rapport with the broker, be punctual, be fair, and do what you say you're going to do, Jake. So, Gino, if I want more Jedi mind tricks like this, where do I go? Woo! To come over to the dark side, my friend. Oh, shit. <laughs> come over to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply. Schedule a call with the team because these are all golden nuggets that we teach. First of all, you need to get your goals in order, right? Multifamily is the right vehicle for the long term. We love the vehicle long term. There's so many different businesses you can build with multifamily, but it's all about becoming a multifamily entrepreneur. And also, I'm going to give you another one, Jake. MM4. Come on. What about that, bro? October 23rd and 24th. JakeandGina.com forward slash MM4. Buy your tickets. That's where it all starts. That's where the adventure starts. The financial vacation for smart people. The real estate conference of the year is what we like to call. Start out by going to MM4 and also going to JakeandGina.com forward slash apply. Let's start that journey in multifamily, my friend. Hey, you are the G-Daddy. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you there. Thanks, Jake. 